I remember the occasion when I was with one of my best friends talking through a phone, and we were discussing about how bad we were at picking up girls. Because last night, we were at a party together, and we were, uh, I still can visualize how I almost got beaten by a, like, a girl's boyfriend. <laughs> and then uh, we were chatting with a group of girls, and they gave all their, their numbers. And I was like, OK. Chill out, bro. <laughs> and I, I was really impressed because we did not just get one number, but five. <laughs> so what we did is that we went to, the, to, to my house and with my friends started calling each one of those numbers. The first one went beep, beep, and when it stopped, hello? No one did answer. I realized that <laughs> it, like, it didn't respond. So the next one, the number didn't even exist. So to summarize, the four numbers, uh, four numbers did not respond, and one did. But unfortunately, wasn't from the girl, but a guy we didn't know. <laughs> so my friend asked me through a phone, Andre, what can we do about the situation? I am tired that the girls don't see the potential. <laughs> With my friends, considering what happened on the party, we decided to become masters of girl pickup. Like me, with the girls, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... And that's when we surfed on the internet and started looking for online dating applications. You know, those programs where you input your personal information and you can find your perfect match. This is with the purpose, so the probability of getting to like a girl would be higher and the prediction of getting to date a girl would be most likely to happen. So why is this guy talking about relationships when this uh, talk is supposed to be about our efficient intelligence and new technologies of this new era? Well, if you analyze deeper, like if you think about uh, the matching program, you, I, well, I would think about uh, how is the program using my personal information? Is the program constantly learning from what I, what I input, what my decisions, what I click? Is there artificial intelligence involved? And there, by analyzing these few things, you can realize that we are living all together a new era, a new era of technology and innovation. And technology today has increased exponentially, especially artificial intelligence, neural decoding devices, or nano, nanotechnology. And because of this exponential change, the time where computers, computers will be more intelligent than all humanity combined is near. And these are things that we haven't expected uh, to come over the last few decades. And talking about expectation after using the program, the matching program, this was the result. Uh, so how is this all done? Well, programmers today are able to simulate the human brain functions and create algorithms, mathematical models, in order to do such tasks such as recognizing faces with hierarchical patterns, better than humans actually do. <laughs> Also, uh, they can, uh, in the art, they can uh, generate paintings simulating the Picasso's technique or Van Gogh's technique. Also, in nanotechnology, they can, uh, in, they can live inside our, our bodies and cure all our damaged cells. And in the future, it will be immortal <laughs> sometime. And there is this thing called neural networks in, in programming where you can uh, create algorithms in healthcare that can d diagnose better, uh, cancer better than actually uh, doctors do. And in this example, um, this, this program, this neural network is trained to identify mitosis in breast cancer. Uh, so what this does is that it, it like, uh, looks for each pixel of the mammogram image and through shape descriptions, it can identify the mitosis. So how is this all done? What is the core of all of this? Well, obviously, it's programming. It is amazing, amazing that how we can access now to this new tool, to this new amazing tool, and express our ideas so we can uh, create like social media like Facebook or Instagram and help other people making the change by com uh, helping them communicate it with their friends. And another cool fact is that we are, we are very close of experiencing this new era where like, uh, we will be able to connect our brains with machines and learn new languages, not in three years, but in three seconds. And when I saw this, I was like shocked. I was like, how is this even possible? And 
Uh, so I started researching and found that that companies are actually working on this, and also like people, and like this was one of my goals to do, and I haven't done much, but <laughs> but uh, what what it, how is this done? Uh, like if you would ask, ask yourselves, well, they look for hierarchical patterns in the brain that. Uh, and, the, and they include the variables such as the neurons firing rate, the direction of the electrical stimulus in the brain. Also, some techniques are used to crack the neural codes such as sparse coding, population coding, or temporal coding. And with, to do so, we are able right now to uh, implant uh, like these neural devices in our brains and control a robotic arm with only your thoughts. Or even like if you... You will text your mom uh, as soon as possible that you're coming from the party and she don't, won't worry. <laughs> so that, I think this is amazing. This is uh, one of my goals. Another of my, of my goals is that uh, I, w I, w I started to develop like, a project, a program. I started developing a program that could diagnose patients with the symptoms and signs. And it all started uh, not long ago, uh, back in 2016, when I had a skiing accident in Beaver Creek. Uh, this left me without motion of my legs, uh, like for two months, and due to a head concussion. So I was so worried, and the problem is that the doctors couldn't find like uh, a reasonable explanation to to my cause. So that thinking about why things happen, I I discovered that this happened because I discovered programming Python, a programming language that gave me hope to find rapid diagnostics uh, with more uh, with accuracy. During my experience of uh, being injured, I discovered some amazing things of how doctors do their, uh, their di medical diagnosis procedure. And what they do is that uh, they include some variables such as the patient's signs, the symptoms, and their complementary explorations after that. And with that, each single variable represents a probability of appearance of each one of the diseases. And this is an example of the base theorem, uh, which uh, uh, this technique is used by doctors. And the other one is a more complex example, uh, um, trying to diagnose a, a stroke situation. I realized that with programming, you could actually make a program that would, uh, would imitate the human interaction with this method and like, make it more accurate, move faster, and uh, could work for a much greater scale. So this is obviously to prevent the late diagnosis, the missing diagnosis, the generic diagnosis, and the inexact diagnosis. And why is this important? Because I realized that in Guatemala, not only in Guatemala, but also around the world, uh, people travel miles to get into the cities where they hope to get the di uh, being diagnosed and treated, but they end up being misdiagnosed with uh, safe fatal injuries or even death. This is me <laughs> developing the first stage of the program. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. It might seem a, a bunch of code, but it actually is the start of something that would be uh, making the change someday. And what is amazing about this is that I use neural networks uh, that imitate the brain functions of the brain. I, I was so amazed but because right now I can tell that I actually like, made a little bit of a of human uh, brain's doctor in order to, to diagnose the patients. So one time, uh, what I'm most proud of this, this project is that one time I was feeling sick, like this dog, and I was feeling like ugly, like with fever and toothache, and I don't know, but I decided to take my computer and try my program out. So I started inputting my symptoms. Okay, I have a toothache, I have eye pain, I have a sore throat, and I have bad breath. Well, I started having a conversation with the artificial intelligence with I implanted it in the program, and he told me I had sinus infection. I was like, really? <laughs> I didn't believe because I, have, I cannot imagine that I was someday uh, talking with a program and actually being diagnosed by it. So what I did is that then I called a doctor, uh, like a real doctor, and he told me, uh, we were having the same conversation. Uh, yes, uh, I, feel, I feel bad. Uh, I have I have toothache. So he told me then you have you might have an infection of the sinuses. And I was like, oh my god, it worked. <laughs> so it, it worked, and 
I, I, was, I was really proud because I've been working so hard on this and finally the first patient, which was me, uh, <laughs> it was, like, was diagnosed and I was, I was pretty happy. So the future of artificial intelligence in medicine could save us time and lives. Also, neural decoding devices and cracking the neural code uh, has helped us uh, find new techniques that uh, do tasks more accurately and better than actually humans do by getting uh, prob better probability outcomes, for example, uh, such in diagnostics. Every action we take today, nowadays, is going to affect the future we're going to live. So it is better to create our own future, create our own experiences, so we can live a better life. And also, if you have these crazy ideas, you have nowadays new tools, such as programming the internet, Instagram, Facebook, to share your ideas, to help other people. And if you, you combine the precious thing we have, which is creativity, emotions, everything, with these new tools, you can make something meaningful. We have to recognize that having the opportunity to make an impact like an interaction in this new era of technology innovation is an opportunity for us to make a, be a like a positive impact on others thank you <laughs>